Hello Otters, how are you today? You wanted parroting colours and here they all are. Ever since I covered some of the Paralene colours in my Daniel Smith colour showdown videos, I've had a lot of requests to see all five of the Daniel Smith Paralene colours together and so your wish is my command. And so we're going to have a look at all of them. They've been used since around the 1912 as vat dye, so that's when they put fabrics in a vat and then dye it. And then they manufacture for commercial use of the perylene colours from around 1957. So relatively modern paints. The name perylene actually comes from its chemical composition. So you have naphthalene, which is where the naphthalene maroon from Daniel Smith comes from and that is made out of 10 carbon atoms and 8 hydrogen atoms and that kind of makes this two linked circles and perylene is this pair of circles twice linked and that is called perylene and really interestingly if you connect three of these naphthalene um, compound so you have one, two, three, then that is called terylene. And if you have four, that is actually called a quarterylene. So there's a bit of chemistry for you there. And that is as far into chemistry as I will ever go into this channel because I have very little amount of chemistry training. The reason why the perylene colours were developed and are very popular in commercial use is because they're incredibly Stable. They're used in textile and also like high grade industrial paints because they are not only incredibly light fast but they are also thermal, chemical and weather stable as well. So that is a huge amount of stability and that's why it's popular on things like cars as well. Here are some samples of the paintings that I've done with these perylene colours. This is a combination of the perylene scarlet, perylene red and the perylene maroon and the same again. So the three colours go very well together. This is perylene violet with some salt textures and this is perylene green with lots of salt textures and again perylene green and then perylene maroon on its own. So all five colours are series three which is a lot pricier than many of the colours Daniel Smith has. However, with these I found that they're incredibly intense colours so you only need a very small amount on your brush to get a huge colour payoff. So yes, the tubes are more expensive but I end up using a lot less of the paint so I kind of think it's about the same as uh, like series one and certainly series two. Back to the colours themselves, I did compare the perylene violet with the perylene maroon in my Daniel Smith colour showdown episode 5 which I will link down below and also in the corner over here on the iCard as well so you can check those out as well. I also compared the perylene green with cascade green in episode 6 which I will also down link below and on the iCard over here as well. Since I made that video, I discovered that apparently handprint.com recommends perylene maroon as a really good replacement for the very fugitive fading alizarin crimson. Jane Brundle also recommends the perylene maroon as a good replacement for the alizarin crimson, but she also recommends adding a little bit of quinacridone rose with your perylene maroon to get it closer to the alizarin crimson hue. Another interesting fact I found with these colours that I've already covered is that the perylene green is a burnt remnant of what is called, now excuse my pronunciation, perylene tetracarboxylic, which is another perylene. Also to note, I did notice while doing the research for this particular video that Jacksons at the moment have the pigment code 
of the permanent green as something like mix of PY3 or something with PG7, which is clearly wrong. It's PBK31. And so I have emailed them to let them know. So hopefully they'll update that soon for their website as well. That's it for the new information on the parenting cards I already covered. Obviously, I already have the color charts done for you that I will bring out at the end to compare all five. But in this video, I am going to be making the color chart for the Perinine Scarlet and the Perinine Red for you. Now, I have to admit, out of the five colors they have, the Perinine Scarlet and the Perinine Red is the closest and I would actually struggle to pick which one is which on the printed color chart. So this is kind of going to be like a bonus episode of the Daniel Smith color showdown as well. So let's get started on making the all important color chart. Perinine Scarlet is made out of PR149 which is Perinine Scarlet and Jackson website says Perinine Scarlet is a warm toned red that when in washed form creates a vivid dark orange hue. This modern pigment is metal free and creates clean mudless mixtures. It is classified as very good in light fastness which is one down from the excellent. It is semi-transparent, granulating and medium staining. Now, several websites, including handprint.com and Sandra Morgan, has mentioned that the light fastness of Perilene Scarlet is not as good as the other Perilene colors, and therefore it is worth doing your own light fastness if you want a super light fast color. The very good light fastness is about the same as how Daniel Smith classifies their Napsol Red and Hansa yellow light so it's not like totally fugitive but it is slightly fugitive so that is something to bear in mind it is a series three color as i mentioned before as well next up is the perinine red this is another series three paint and it is made out of pr178 which is your perinine red Jackson says Perilene Red is an orange toned red rather than the warm toned red of the Perilene Scarlet that when in wash form creates a vivid dark orange hue. This modern pigment is metal free and creates clean mudless mixture. Perilene Red is classified as again very good light fastness which is one down from excellent. It is semi-transparent, granulating, and medium staining. Sandra Morgi, who is a botanical artist, mentions Perlin Red is great for using for painting fruits in things like stripes on apples, blushes on pears, leathery pomegranate skins, or any fruit for which a more common red would be too bright. Welcome back. The paints have dried. This side is Perilene Scarlet and this side is Perilene Red. Because this isn't an official Daniel Smith color showdown, I won't go into too much detail in comparing between the two colors, just some highlights, because otherwise this video is going to get really long. So just a quick few things. The Perilene Scarlet is a more orangey warmer red and the perilene red is like a really red red pillar box red slightly cooler than perilene scarlet red now i did mess up on the gradation here what happened was i had it painted then i sprayed some water down here which went on there and it went patchy so i had to go over the this bit again so i've done the same here just so that the comparison is fair However, these three on the hot paper, rough paper, Bockingford, and the Archer's cold paper, and the same here, are just one layer of the each colors. Now, all perilene colors are slightly prone to cauliflowering, so you do have to be a bit careful with that if you want to avoid cauliflowering. Both are semi-transparent, 
The lifting wise, the perylene scarlet is like a mid-level staining. However, with the perylene red, you're going to have to be very careful when you put it down because it is really hard to get it off. In terms of glazing, the all the perylene colours have a sheen to them when they are in the palette. And that translates to if you put too much down in layers, then you are going to get this slight sheen to your painting. Gauzing wise, it doesn't produce any linear patterns. Again, this side is perylene scarlet, this side is perylene red. For salting, the perylene red works better than the scarlet. Water blooms kind of about the same. In terms of colour mixes, I think you do get a brighter mix out of the perylene red rather than the perylene scarlet, particularly if you are looking for the violet and the blues and purples and magenta kind of colours, just because with the perylene red being the cooler red, it's always going to do a better job of mixing brighter purples for you. The complementary colour to the perylene scarlet certainly is the thalo turquoise and as you can see that neutralises perfectly into a nice grey. I would say you need a slightly, just a smidgen more green than thalo turquoise to cancel out the perylene red though. They're both lovely, they produce their own lovely range of colours so they're all good for mixing as well. So let's have a look at the set as a whole. So this is all five of the perylene colours arranged in a group and they are all really, really nice colours. They are slightly muted but very, very intense colours and I think they make a good set. However, with it all being a series three colour, apart from, it looks like the Perilyn Green's actually series two, so I made a mistake there, I'm sorry about that. They are still quite pricey paints, so if you're really, really into your Perilyn colours, I would say that in terms of what's representative of, you know, what we think of as Perilyn colours, certainly the Perilyn Violet, Perylene Maroon and Perylene Green is a great three tube set that you can buy for yourself. And I say that because the Perylene Scarlet and Perylene Red, they are other colours that are similar to these two colours that we can get. Dana Smith has a wide range of both warms and cool reds. If you want to go for four, then I would certainly say go for the Perylene Violet, Green and Maroon and then pick whichever scarlet or red that is most convenient to what you are looking for. In terms of how the five colours mix with other colours around the colour wheel, I would say they are all really good mixing colours. You can get some really nice inky colours with the perylene reds and scarlet. You get gorgeous bright greens with the perylene green and the perylene violet and the perylene maroon is really good for using as like a mother colour and just toning down your palette that you're going to be using for a painting in general. I've certainly become a big fan of these perylene colours because they have such a wide range of values so you can create a very detailed deep expressive abstract painting just using even one color so i will definitely be using these more muted surprise surprise for me colors for my own art now if you like to have a go at comparing these colors for yourself then i have made a dot card containing all five of the colors i showed you in this video this card is currently available as this month's patreon reward at the 25 dollar tier and for 25 dollars you get full access to the blog which contains all the scans and behind the scenes and all sorts on that tier you also get a mini painting and a dot card every single month and the dot card changes every month and this month which is may is perylene colors 
so if you like to play with these colors yourself all you have to do is be my patron on $25 or above tier before the 31st of May 2018 and as with all dot cards I make I really hate it when you like buy a dot card and it's just like a flake of paint and you get to do like one little swatch card and then that's it and you can't do any mixes or anything so I like to provide big dots so you are going to receive plenty of each color for you to really really get to know them because when you have a little dot and a little swatch that looks kind of pale because you didn't get enough paint on your dot card you don't really get to know your paint whereas with this you have plenty to mix with other colors that you use on your palette all the time to see how they mix and maybe do a painting with them so you can really get to know these colors without having to buy any more and then you can pick which colors you will actually like to purchase a whole tube of so if you like this then make sure you are signed up to my patreon on $25 or above tiers by the 31st of May 28 and of course I will leave a link to my patreon page in the description down below where you can sign up to receive all these goodies that's it for the Daniel Smith Periline colors. They really are really nice colors. And I will leave a link to each of these colors on Jackson's for you. If by watching this video or any other videos I have, you feel like you'd like to buy a tube of these colors. And if you are happen to be going to get them from Jackson's anyway, then I would really appreciate it if you could go to Jackson's website by clicking the links I leave in the description below every video because what happens is the price you pay for it won't change at all. It will be the same price as if you go normally, but Jackson gives me back some commissions which goes to really help this channel in terms of buying more art supplies to share with you on this channel. So that's it for the Periline Colours by Daniel Smith. Five very, very gorgeous colours that I am really excited to bring into my own art practice as well. And I hope you get excited about bringing this into your art practice as well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.